the first podcast from Dare to Do. I have lots of uh, subscribers and you've written to me that you want to hear and listen uh, a podcast. I've been thinking about it and I just thought today is the day where I start a podcast. Now, the videos I do usually are short stories, short story motivations or videos about Buddhism, Zen and Tao, or just in general, motivational videos and stories. So bear in mind, this is a podcast. This will be a little bit different. The audio quality will be different. Also, I won't cut out all the background noises. So you'll maybe you'll hear me drinking coffee or I have my dog in my office and maybe you'll hear him sleep or bark. Uh, bear in mind, I live next to a police helicopter landing platform. So maybe you'll hear a helicopter once in a while. And yeah, just then the audio in general won't be as clear and, and cut and edited like in my other videos. So let's dig in, let's start. Um, yeah, I, I posted a video the other day, which was called The Power of the Universe. And it is uh, the first chapter of a great book I found online on gutenberg.org, which I only can recommend. I can only recommend this website to anyone who is interested in reading generally because you have uh, tens of thousands of free books, basically royalty free books. And some of them are really, really good. So this book is called Within You is the Power. And the author is Henry Thomas Hamblin. Now, before I did the first chapter, I read in the first chapter of this book and did some video editing. It was more like a meditational video. Um, I read through it and it kind of aligned with what I usually do with the subconscious power of man and how to use it and how through transcending your thinking, you can transcend your real life. And it says on the website that the file was posted on March 27, 2003. But I think it is much older. I think this book is from the 50s or 40s even. It's just an estimation. Uh, I don't know for sure. But yeah, I will read the preface to you. The preface I didn't read. Um, so he says, There is a power lying hidden in man by the use of which he can rise to higher and better things. There is in man a greater self that transcends the finite self of the sense man, even as the mountain towers above the plain. The object of this little book is to help men and women to bring their inward powers of mind. Uh, bear in mind, he said men and women. I had lots of comments, lots of comments from people in the comment section saying that when he says man, during the chapter, he repeats the word man, and he means man, he means men and women. So people said, yeah, this is 2021, um, just say men and women, instead of just man only. And uh, I pointed out to them that this book is, is older. But yeah, it says in it says here he says it himself. Um, this the object of this little book is to help men and women to bring their inward powers of mind and spirit into expression. So when he when he says man, he obviously means men and women. So to all the women out there, this this book is for you also. Okay, let me just close the blinds real quick. Okay. <clears throat> this book should help you to build up character and to find within yourself that wondrous self, which is your real self, and which, when found, reveals to you that you are literally and truly sons of God and daughters of the Most High. Now, this, this goes back to the belief that the subconscious, every one of us has got a subconscious. And we don't know exactly how the subconscious works. But basically, the, the thinking, the theory behind this is that 
each one of us has a small bit of the subconscious and the subconscious basically is what holds everything and everyone together. So the proof that we've got this subconscious is also proof that we are of God and that we have this part in us, which allows, and it allows us to tap into this power, which we can then use to create the reality which we want. He goes on in the preface, he says, there is no way whereby the discipline of life can be avoided. There is no means by which fate can't be tricked, nor a cunning device by which the great cosmic plan can be evaded. So basically, you have, to, you have to get through life. There is no shortcut here. He goes on. Each life must meet its own troubles and difficulties. Each soul must pass through its deep waters. Every heart must encounter sorrow and grief. But none need be overwhelmed in the great clo- <clears throat> but none need be overwhelmed in the great conflicts of life for one who has learned the great secret of his identity with the universal life and power dwells in an impregnable city built upon and into the rock of truth against which the storms of life beat in vain so Optimism is the word here. He says that each one of us, each one of you has the key to the life of our dreams and ourselves. I guess. Please, uh, please write in the comments if you disagree or in fact agree with anything that is being said in this book. So let's go to chapter one. Infinite life and power. He says... Man possesses, did he but know it, illimitable power. The powers of the spirit are far greater and finer than those of the subconscious mind. Thought is a spiritual power of tremendous potency. But this is not the power of which we speak. By thought, man can either raise himself up and connect himself with the powerhouse of the universe, or cut himself off entirely from the divine inflow. His thought is his greatest weapon because by it he can either draw on the infinite or sever himself in consciousness, but not in reality from his divine source. Through the divine spark within him, which is really his real self, man is connected with the infinite. So we all have a divine spark within us, is what he claims and uh, and this divine spark connects us to divine life and power. He goes on, so long as he is ignorant of his oneness with the divine source of all life, he is incapable of appropriating the power that is really his. If, however, he enters into this inner knowledge, he finds himself the possessor of of infinite power and unlimited resources. The message here is that we all have a power, an endless power device built within us that we can tap into endlessly to create and fill in the voids in our life as we wish, as we please. But only if we realize that we have this power, we can also use it appropriately. If we are ignorant towards this fact, it will just be there, but we won't use it because we don't know that it is there. He goes on. This power then is God's, yet it is also man's, but it is not revealed to him until he is fit to be entrusted with it. It is only when man realizes his oneness with his divine source that he becomes filled with its power. So this is a a tricky point because he says the power is God's but also man's but it is not revealed to him until he is fit to be entrusted with it. So basically first you have to evolve as a soul or as a human being and only then will you be shown the door to becoming one with the divine source. Um, What does that mean? When are you fit to be entrusted with it? 
I'll give you an example. You, the listeners right now who are maybe listening to this uh, theory for the first time, does it mean through divine orientation in your life that suddenly you are fit to be entrusted with this spiritual power? And that is why you are listening to this podcast right now. Or not? Or will you... Will you ignore it or, or will you use this power? So, yeah, I don't know what to think of that, that um, it is not revealed to him until he's fit to be entrusted with it. I don't know if I agree with that. Maybe it's just um, if you are willing to look for something, if you are searching for something, maybe only then you will find it. And maybe the common denominator with what he says and what I say is that if you are willing to search to look for something, it means at the same time that you are now fit to be entrusted with it because you are looking for something. Something outside of this outer world. Yeah. He goes on that... Uh, they fear that unilluminated and unevolved people may make destructive use of spiritual power. This, to the writer, appears to be improbable. It is true that strong personalities who have a great belief in their own power to achieve and succeed draw unconsciously on hidden powers and thus are able to raise themselves high above their fellows. The use, however, that they can make of spiritual power of the, for base purposes is limited and is not to be feared. There are others, of course, who are misusing their powers. These are black magicians, and while they may do a certain amount of harm, they become reduced ultimately to beggary and impotence. So there may be this fear that people... That people who are unilluminated, that aren't prepared, that aren't woke enough for this knowledge, may realize that it is there and use it for destruction. He goes on to say that one shouldn't be scared of this prospect because maybe they can use it a little bit, but in the end it will destroy them rather than that they can harm the world with it. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, I've read in other books about this subject that uh, the power, the power of the universe is there. And this power doesn't care what you do with it. It is just there. It is ready to be used by anyone who wants to use it. And in that, in that, in hindsight, there is no right or wrong. If you want to create the life which you want in this world, who is there to tell you that it is wrong or is not wrong? Let's say you want a, a big house and a fast car, and people say, no, it's not right to be wanting material things, because this is not what this power was meant for. But you are not harming anyone, you are not hurting anyone. So uh, this is where maybe I disagree. Tell me what you think. I mean, if there is something like this spiritual power of tremendous potency, which we control through our, through our thoughts, what is allowed and what is not allowed to do with this power? Please let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, maybe you've got experiences with using spiritual power. But let's go on. Man is not separate from his divine source and never has been. He is in reality one with the infinite. The separation, the separation which he feels and experiences is mental and is due to his blindness and unbelief. Man can never be separated from spirit, for he himself is spirit. He is an integral part of one complete whole. He lives and moves and has been and has his being in God, or universe, or omnipresent spirit. And God dwells in him. 
the majority of people are unaware of this intimate relationship with the divine. And because they are unaware, or because they refuse to believe it, they are in one sense separated from the inner life of God. Yet this separation is only in their thoughts and beliefs, and not in reality. Man is not separated, and never can be, yet so long as he believes that he is separate and alone, he will be as weak and helpless as though he actually were. Yeah, so this is interesting. Um, he says man is not separate from his divine source, that we are one with the universe, one with God, one with the spirit. And only if we, if we think that we are separate, we will live as we are separate, but we aren't separate, actually. But it, it is our belief that cripples us. And this reminds me of a saying that um, the one who thinks he can and the one who thinks he can't, they both are right. I like that sentence. I like that quote a lot because um, if you believe you can do something, you will do it. And if you believe that you can't do it, you are also right because without the belief, you will never be able to do it. So I think we'll wrap this first podcast up because I think I've already been talking enough gibberish today. I'll skip over some parts in this first chapter and I'll go to the end because it is the first chapter more or less is like an introduction. So I'll read the last paragraphs. He says the power within is infinite for by faith in it, man is directly coupled up with the spiritual power of the universe. That's also important because the power is infinite. It is endless. You have enough power to accomplish anything, to create worlds. So if you believe in this power, you are directly connected to the spiritual power of the universe. So belief connects you to the universe. If you believe you have this endless power, thus making you so powerful that nothing can hold you up, that there aren't any limitations to that what you want. So he says, a change then must take place within man before he can enter into his divine inheritance. He must learn to think after the spirit instead of after the flesh. Like the prodigal son, he must come to himself and leave the husks and the swine in the far country, returning to his father's house, where there is bread of life, enough and to spare. So, uh, yes, he's referring there to the New Testament and the story of the prodigal son who comes to himself and leaves the husk and swine and comes back to his father and his father loves him for coming back where he's offered bread and wine and water. And uh, this is that, actually. So you must change yourself before you can claim this divine inheritance. You must learn to think after the Spirit, so to believe in what to believe in what you see in your mind and not what your eyes see because your eyes can deceive you in this world your eyes will only show you what is now but the endless possibilities which you can see in your mind through your thoughts that is what you should believe in so you should see with your mind and not with your eye. Okay, this wraps up my first podcast. Uh, please don't be too harsh in the comments. Um, I'm aware of that some people won't like it. Some people will. And please um, tell me in the comments what you think of this chapter one of The Secret Power of the Universe by Henry Thomas Hamblin. 
and uh, tell me what you think of the podcast, how I should, uh, how I could make it better, what you would like to see, would you like to have, would you like to have some background music? I will try to get some guests to make discussions in the future, maybe some uh, phone calls, which we will record and then put online discussing discussions about spiritual stuff. So yeah, um, I hope you kind of enjoyed the first podcast. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and stay blessed.